Hello and welcome to another episode of Warhammer Total War. In the last one, we took the Bitterstone Mine in a absolutely devastating attack. I let it personally because I kind of wanted to see how very little damage I could take and take over an enemy settlement. And with some overpowered characters like our combat Thane and such, yeah, you can do it quite nicely. But we'll take a look here at Bitterstone Mine, I think. I'm not sure if I want to get the um, the garrison stuff just yet. I think I might want to get the uh, growth. Yeah, I think after I take Ekrund and Stone Mine Tower, I'll have a better idea of what I want to do there. But I should be able to go all the way to Ekrund. Ekrund and besiege it this turn. No? I could. I could do that. I could move Grumbrindle in. Uh, even just under normal movement range, probably. If I get to there, I'd probably be able to reinforce when we actually hit the place. If not this turn, next turn for sure. So let's see. The High King acts. Let's get to here. This place has no defenders. Yeah, it'll be next turn. But, whatever. Let's get there. Let's take that place next turn. And, oh, okay, now I can see what they have. So they have a fort here. They've got some income generation, a troll cave. Ah, uh, sure. Let's get some growth here. We need some economic uh, power down there. You are ready to rock. You have one more turn until you have mass cannons. And as such, this turn, I should be able to get the uh, Ekman miners. So we've got uh, super miners, essentially my minor army working in the mines of Mount Gunbad. I, I guess that's kind of lore appropriate. <laughs> we have a group of miners that are all on their day-to-day -day lives working in the Brightstone and Gold Mines, and then they just come out of the mines with their blasting charges and goes like, okay, who's strewn around with us whenever they get uh, attacked by the enemy? Oh, cool. My ally took this. For the wisdom of Valea. That's good. I like that he took that. Hmm. I wish I knew that that was going to happen a few turns ago. I might have not needed to send this army up north. Because then I could have just kept this army maybe around here and pushed into the vampires this way. But I could always use this to secure the north and push into the vampires here and maybe try to take this uh, this hold back and then use that as a um, an anchor leave this army there to then fully secure the north that might be a good idea ah, let's go down here how you doing at your lair here and what can the we, do we are trusted friends we are going up alright so we're good there Yeah, we'll continue this guy north. There's some more greenskins up here. A few more places up in the mountains, which are forward dwarf holds. So we are going to take this back here. Because if we take this back, then we park these guys right here in the North World Edge Mountains. At Karak Ungar. Then we'll have another uh, place under our control. Alright, and the turn. We have over a hundred thousand dollars ah <sighs> we I just we're never gonna run out of money it's absolutely incredible all right what do you guys want they want a peace treaty fuck no <laughs> no you silly silver host you're undead I will never side with the undead we are Dawi. we are pure blooded dwarves There's no way we'll ever do that 
Last Defenders did a Rite of Awakening, that's fine. Black Venom is gone, that is good. And then we will do into Normal March and we will take Ekrund. And this one I think I'll auto resolve. I gotta take some damage on my, uh, my infantry, but who cares. Easy peasy. I mean, I could have done it again where I attacked with just my uh, my characters and did some good stuff, but who really cares? This is much faster. Ah, we'll just occupy again. Quest successful. Using Grom Brindle, the White Dwarf's army win two battles against Greenskins. Raise or sack five, three different settlements belonging to the following race, Greenskins. All right. So that give me a... Um, that give me a thing. Yeah, give me a quest rune helm of Zulfbar. Passive ability, the rune helm of Zulfbar. Constant self, allies in range, plus 12 leadership. Holy shit, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a really good leadership bonus. Oh, Grumbrindle, you are getting absolutely OP as fuck. And I like it. And we've got level ups for Grudge Bearer. I really, truly want to um, start going down your yellow line here to get you uh, a lot more badass. We get Lantern Bloodline for now. But the future. That'll be the future. All right, lower down moved. That's Grum Brindle. So we took that. Can you, Grum Brindle, get to that mines and take it? I knew it! Skaven! I knew it! I said that last episode. I knew there would be Skaven here. All right, auto-resolve them. Kill them all. And occupy. Claim Skaven revealed. I knew it would happen. Uh, All right, Grom Brindle, how are you doing? I haven't gotten your flash bomb yet. I probably should, but I keep forgetting. Whenever I do get it, I always forget to use it. Um, I get stand your ground, which is eighteen seconds of massive melee defense and leadership or I could just start increasing your badassness weapon strength percentages is OP as hell because you already have so much weapon strength oh my god I think we need to um, I think we need to get his combat maxed out. I don't really need the that stuff yet. Global recruitment gas capacity plus one might be nice to get eventually. But I don't know if it's a requirement yet. I'll get it next time I'm starting to uh, upgrade stuff on the road. Lower not moved. All right, we'll continue just chunking you forward. We're gonna go after this place. I'm assigned skill points. This is my rune smith that is with uh, Grumbrindle. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll just continue to uh, get these until I can get rune negation. More on the side skill points. My thane, my combat thane. You are starting to get uh, OP as hell, and that is good. Eh, you don't really need charging to battle. We'll finish off your armor upgrades. Now you you got your full-on yellow tree. You're just 15 points all yellow. <laughs> ah, it's silly, but I like it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's again get some growth here. Oh yeah, we got lots of growth around here. So this way we can get this place leveled up quickly. 
as it looks like the Skaven in these mines had growth as well, which is good. Alright, that's all good. These guys, unfortunately, looks like they're going to take stone mine. But no, I want it. I want it to be mine. Damn it. These guys have just about taken that. Alright, very good. We all succeeding. We're making like 10,000 gold a turn, so this is ridiculous. I should probably start macroing up with another army. Because I've got two down here and two up, up north. One's a retainer army that's blocking gun bad. I should make another army to just wander around my main capital area to keep that secure. Although at the moment I don't really have to worry about that. And then like I said in previous episodes, I'd like to make armies that have themes to them. So very soon, whether it be in this next turn or the turn after, I should be able to start building some bigger... Um, better structures in um, the Silver Road, my main settlement. And because of that, I'll be able to finally make um, like additional flamethrower units and more helicopters and such. Like, I'd like to have an army that is essentially an air force. I don't believe there's a single dwarf lord that has the ability to ride on a helicopter but it would be awesome is if I had that oh nice thank you Barkvar I need to give Barkvar a treat I can give him like 10,000 gold for that as a thank you gift because he took care of that uh, green skin army for me that he probably wasn't going to do anyway Look at these guys moving in. They take that and they destroy it or taking it. Taking it. Oh, okay. Hey, these guys, they were thirsty for these these bases. They wanted them badly, but thankfully I was able to snatch them. I got three out of four before he was able to get in there. And he's going on. He's going to go down further and go get some more units. Oh, and he wants... He, oh, he's thirsty for... Oh, he wants my stuff. He he wants the stuff to the north. Oh, I ain't letting you get it. That stuff's mine. Uh, I guess in the future, at some point, I'm going to confederate with all these guys. But still, I, I want them. They're mine. All right. Ekrund, do that. Um, at some point here, I need to... Like, I, I like getting rid of all of the recruitment buildings, that way I don't have to worry about, like, recruitment in these places. But, this does have... It's like, I could get rid of this. At some point, essentially, I guess, now... <laughs> Like, recruitment costs become irrelevant. So what we, all we really need to do is worry about global recruitment. Because at some point in the future, say you have an army down here in the Dwarf Holds. And you're marching down and taking care of Tomb Kings, sort of thing. And then you need an army up here to fight Norska. It is actually better and faster to have global recruitment disband this army and rebuild it up here because it's, it would just take them like every turn one two three four five six seven eight and this is like taking a straight line they'd have to like weave around all this stuff it just takes them way too long to get up there so eventually all i really need is like one province that can recruit which will be karaza karak and then that's it all the other provinces can just be pure economy if I need to. Hmm. The, axe for war. the axe does thirst for war. Can I get there on this turn? Ooh. Aye, grudges will be settled. I'm not sure. Let's see. Night, drink. Let us yeah, I can. This. Yes, I can. It's not actually much of a, a garrison here, so I think I can fight this. 
I mean, it's only dwarf warriors that we have, but we have a lot of range. They only have three archer units, so I can easily destroy their towers and then overwhelm their archers. Nice. So yeah, the, the entire concept is eventually we'll have a recruitment capital locally, which will be Karaza Karak, because that'll be useful all the way through fighting the Greenskins to the south. And then eventually, when we are making armies to go and assist with the vampires to the west. But then after that, I'll probably set up something that is a good, say, four or five turns of distance away from Karazakrak as a place to do recruitment. Warriors. Warriors. Oh man, such a standard little army of mine. Standard little dwarven army. Okay, well, it would be the best place to hit. Probably here, because we just get through two towers, and once we get in, we have got the. We can. You know, we got the stuff to our backs, so we don't have to worry about it. If we're going through here, we probably have to go through all four of these towers, and that'd be silly. Wait a man, blood! Oh, we should be okay with this. We'll just move this whole thing back a little bit. We'll turn off the attack. Anything on the grudge throwers. And we'll drop that fort tower. Go, grudge throwers, go. Take it out. And that way I don't have to worry about it when I move forward with my archers. As my corollers will should be able to. They got 160. These guys have 140. I should be able to just barely outrange them. And as long as I'm in this little section right here, I guess I can probably also take out that fort tower. That'll be fine. And then I'll have a nice big section. You can see where they, their limit here is. And I can move up to that. And I can start just taking pot shots at them. You have to, like, move through my units in order to get a shot at it. Seems, seems kind of silly. Ah, but oh well. The fort towers are being taken out quite quickly. And then we will show them the overwhelming superiority of Dwari, of Dawi range firepower. We'll just take it out completely so that they can't. What? Why did you bring your big guns out? That makes no sense to me. Okay. Enjoy some artillery, biggins. You're out in the open fields. There's nothing your allies can do to help you. My archers are all here, ready to intercept you if you try to run to us. What are you going to do? Run back into the <laughs> base? Okay, that makes absolutely zero sense. All right, so that is their range limit there. So let's align out in front of that. And we should be right at our range limit. We'll just slide forward that tiny bit. And now we should be firing and they can't. <laughs> ah, joy. It's just got a couple rocks left. Just fire them off there. Not much left out. Okay. Used all of its ammo. You guys go sit at the back. I'm done with you. Oh wait, that's my uh, my thing. Archers, let's get you to slide over to this way a little bit. There we go, more of you fighting. And considering the amount of damage we've done to these guys, 
we can probably slide in. No need to worry about that kind of stuff anymore because we have got so many archers. We should just be able to focus down there, our archers, with impunity. We'll get our uh, lord going to bash on the gatehouse. Oh, yeah. And they're broken. Arm and Dragon move up. Archers are doing nasty things to all the enemies on the walls. Those biggins. Oh, those biggins. They don't want to exist anymore, I'm sure. Now, I, I don't want... I could scale the walls, but scaling, scaling walls is annoying because um, your units are instantly set to fatigued, and that takes away a lot of their melee defense and such. I'd rather just pour through the gap here, considering how much I've uh, uh, you know, reduced the enemy's numbers at, the, at this position. Uh, gate is almost breached. I'll send in one of the Dwarf Warrior units to assist with him in breaching the gate. And it should be good here in a moment for me to put it back to normal motion. Get Lord versus Lord and push in the army. And we'll just back ourselves into this corner here. We'll just try to push on past as we don't want to get caught up on this big boss as we're going in. Where is this big boss? The camera's not being the most uh, cooperative thing right now. Ah, oh, there he is. Yeah, he is kind of uh, surrounded by a few Dali. Just a few. Just a few. We've got one guy left that has any arrows. Shoot him. Might as well shoot those bolts. Ooh, like, you're not going to do it any other way. Yeah, he, 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 he's gone. Excellent. Alright. And that's victory. <laughs> what did we lose? Three guys there, one guy there. So, four... We lost, no, the four guys there, one guy there, so we lost five men. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Five guys to losing 467. Well, actually, they lost everything because they were defending um, the fort, so we, they lost 587 in total. Because we'll, we'll hunt them down, but uh, Quarler is doing their work with a good average of uh 60 odd kills between them all not much on the grudge throwers but that's because the grudge throwers were focusing on taking down those towers and for some reason shooting up those big ones that decided to uh come out front in front of all of the artillery for some reason <laughs> uh, well even on very hard the ai sometimes is dumb as a brick and you can't change that. However, this is good. We managed to take that without taking very much losses, so we can immediately start pushing north to the next place. That's taken. We'll just occupy. We don't want the uh, public order issue here. This guy is going to get an opal amulet. Wait, what, what was that thing? The opal amulet. I'll have to take a look here at this guy. Well, let's go take a look at his character. Opal Amulet. It is... Ward save. 22% damage resistance. That's like all damage of all types. Ward save is really important because it's the only thing that blocks armor piercing damage. So that is good for us. Uh, we could get here... <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of extra characters that I keep getting and then I'm just not <laughs> having to use them all. Um, 
I don't know. I want to give you some public order. Why not? Potion of strength. Oh, 40% weapon damage? Holy shit. I mean, the potion of healing is what these guys want because then it makes them, like, super durable, but... Oh, that's a lot of freaking weapon strength in armor piercing. Um, I mean, I'll give them some missile resistance, I guess. Why not? Sword of anti-heroes. Oh my god, I have actually a fair amount of items here. Nice. Oh, I should definitely switch out this sword of swift slaying on him for this sword of anti-heroes. Enables magical attacks, melee attacks, plus five. Yes, please. Okay, so we'll give this guy the uh, gold sigil sword, which is the same as what the other um, grudge bearer has. And we'll give him some basic armor. Why not? Skills. You have some skills. Uh, probably get Axe Lord first just to increase his units. And then we'll go from there. Uh, immediately from here, next turn, we're going to go and um, push forward. We can't let these guys get ahead of us and take this place from us. As I want it. I want it bad. Uh, we'll go for security here because this is a uh, far removed from my empire. So it would be a little frightening out there. But we have a whole bunch of stuff to upgrade at Karazakrak. As it has leveled up. So... Gem cutters leveling up, foundry, gyrocopters, iron drakes, organ guns, hell yes. That we'll get. Eh, we'll, do I need the tool makers in this place anymore? I have so much income. Should I? Uh, we should look into this. Building browser. Karaz Akrak. Plus seven currently. I have a little bit of chaos corruption, but it's going away. Okay, good. This is currently plus eight public order. So I do need public order. I have one more level. And then in the future, I can cut the Baker's Guild Halls from the secondary places. Which will then allow me to put in... Um, other stuff there. Specifically, more than likely, uh, guild marketplaces. Or, um, drinking halls. So, a little while longer, I want this drinking hall here, so I might as well upgrade it, because who cares, I have infinite gold. I can finally get the Karazakarak airfield, which will give me gyrocopter stuff, recruit ranks for gyrocopter, movement range for all armies 5%. So I think that is going in here. And also I'm going to eventually want the thro Throne Hall of the High King. So the airfield will go in. Now the question is the Toolmaker's Workshop. I could get rid of it and open up an extra slot here. At the moment, I can't get gyrocopters and such. Because I'm going to need the Engineer's Workshop. So this guaranteed here is going to be an engineer's workshop because that will allow me to get the more advanced stuff. Now what I could do is I could move two of my military production units, not units, um, buildings, to my um, minor settlements in the future because they would have the space for them so for example because i have the tier 4 mod which makes this quite nice i could do the ranger barracks and the mustering hall or for example out in mount squighorn and grungi after i get rid of the baker's guild hall when i finish leveling up karaza karak all the way as it's i'm I'm still getting a massive quantity of growth, but 
it's still taking me seven turns to get surplus. Um, let's see here. I'm currently at three surplus, and I need five. So it's going to take me another seven turns, then probably another seven turns, or eight turns or so. So it's going to be 15 or so turns until I finish off this as a great hold. And then once I click that to upgrade to great hold, I can drop this and this, and I have instantly two more slots in these. Then I can drop here, mustering hall, rebuild it on over here. I could most, and then this is the decision. Do I drop the toolmaker's workshop now, considering that it's only 400 gold? I would go from 11,510 to 11,110. Not like it's much of a difference, but it would allow me to get more than likely. Uh, we we'll get an armory. We we'll get runesmiths. We'll get a forge. Then eventually a rune forge, or I could get an oath, a uh, hall of oaths down there, which would give me hammerers well i need that for hammerers but i would get eventually iron breakers once i got a forge up and running as well oh oh man and this makes me wonder should i even have this guild marketplace here income from all buildings in this province is nice however my main amount of income is not coming from this province. I get 4,600 from this province, which is good, but I get almost the same amount from a single building here in Gunbat, like a single base. This place is giving me 4,000 something. Because if I drop this here, I could immediately get both the Hall of Oaths and the Armory and move it directly to the Gromel Forge, then I could get Iron Breakers. I think, I think that might be worthwhile here. And the Toolmakers... Yeah, we're going to sacrifice a little bit of economy here in order to make Karaza Karak the ultimate in tech for having all the different uh, technologies. And even if this goes down, like if I look at it here, even if this goes down a bit, I think that will be fine because we still have, have 88,000 saved. Like even if this was zero or just a couple thousand, I would be more than good enough. Alright, end the turn here, and let's see what we can do. Oh, what do you want, honorable ally? No, you are undead. I know for some reason you like me, because I'm fighting the host in Clan Moors, but no. I am not going to group with undead. We are Dawi. We do not fight the undead. And look at the balance of power between the greenskins now. Oh, that feels so good. But look at the vampire counts. It's almost even. They're actually winning slightly. We have our next major opponent. This will be the age of the vampires here in maybe a few episodes when we have to start fighting them. Oh, this is going to be fun. An Age of Discovery. The Raging Sea God Stormfells has gone missing, perhaps blown too far south by the arcane tempest that is consuming the world. With his absence, the great ocean is becalmed. The distance of the world sends an opportunity. It is now no longer for the elves to dominate the seas alone. Other powers seek to ply the oceans, hunt for treasures, and expand their empires abroad. 
However, they must not mistake a calm sea for a safe one. There are still countless dangers leaking, lurking in the depths. All major po port owners have become known to each other via diplomacy. Cool. Uh, Winds of Magic starting amount plus 20%. Uh, doesn't matter to us because we don't use magic. Alright, so we did cut a bunch of buildings here. Our income has dropped a little, but it's still over 10k, so I don't really care. We can get our Hall of Oaths. We can get our armory here. Yeah, that's probably the best thing. Which will give us plus one for runesmiths. And now, oh my god, so much freaking... <laughs> There's so much upgrading at Karaza Karak. It's amazing. All right, up here in the north. Ready. These guys don't seem to be continuing to go forward. That's good. Plus 13, that's pretty much all military presence, but that is okay. Once we get to here and take that place, then military presence will be fine. One rug. As, oh yeah. You have practically nothing here. So we'll sit right there. Next turn we'll take that, which will be quite easy to take. And then we'll just sit there and that... There's nothing here. This is the edge of the map, so... There's no attacks that'll come through there. Any attacks that come through here and go south will hit gun bad. Any attacks that come through here and go north will hit this, but that's sacrificial. That's fine. Anybody that comes up through here, who are you guys? Do I? I haven't run into them yet, so I don't can't do diplomacy. What? Any attacks that come through here will have to go back by Karak Angor, who is a nice settlement. Nice. A little bit of garrison, but we should be able to take it out as long as we apply our siege abilities correctly. All right. Our left flank here is completely secured. Our right flank is completely secured. We just need to push continuing down here into the Bright Wastes. These are the last defenders. Who are at war with everyone I'm at war with, so let's go non-aggression. And we don't need military access yet. We'll save that. But now here is secured. And so all we have to do is, like... Like, realistically, our little blob here is just nicely surrounded by various allies, and we're starting to just plug up the holes in the north. Oh, we are in really good situation here, actually. That's being besieged by our ally. So... That's not good for him. <laughs> This place is plus 25, and it's not all... Well, it's characters and military presence, so... We should probably leave them there for a while. Get that upgraded. Grumbrindle. We can actually just continue going south with you, because you are ready to kick some more ass. And we'll go for this. This is definitely... Definitely a uh, Skaven stronghold here. A strategic location of special importance to the Dwarven Realms. It may provide a unique building train, building chain. Very nice. So we want to take that for sure. Other than that, we are super duper secure. Losing a little bit of public order here, but that is fine. As soon as this is upgraded, we'll be able to upgrade our Feast Hall, which will give us even more... Um, public order and then this will be absolutely fine i mean it's 45 turns until it rebels oh, no, so no worries there and we're actually really close to being able to join confederation with these guys moderate probably another few turns and those guys would actually be quite happy to join confederation in which case then we'll have this entire left flank will be ours and we can secure it nicely although it's kind of nice having that in somebody else's hands and i don't have to worry about it 
Speaking of a 10,000 gold here, it might be time to recruit another lord as we will soon, uh, three or four turns from now, have all of these buildings upgraded and our ability to recruit more units will be much, much higher. As such, we might want to get another lord sitting there at Karazukarak just to build units. Because if we get a uh, extra ball of wonderfulness, you know, a bunch of extra you know, long beards and iron breakers and such, then we can send them to the front with that guy, and then he can come back after depositing those units at the front and you know, just continue to uh, be our recruiter dude. But that is going to be it for now, as we end the turn, and uh, we're doing well. Our flanks are secure, and the Dwarven Empire has never looked better. But, thanks for watching, and good, good hunting out there, fellow Dawi.